What's up everyone? It is Rachel. Welcome back to my channel. Today, because UC Berkeley's admissions have been released and UC Berkeley's transfer admissions have been released, we are going to be talking about UC Berkeley housing. So some background about me if you are new. My name is Rachel. I'm currently a senior at Berkeley or online Berkeley now. <laughs> and I am double majoring in cognitive science and legal studies. And low key, I am a self-proclaimed expert on Berkeley's housing because I have lived in the dorms at Berkeley all four years of college. So my freshman year, I lived in unit three. The summer after my freshman year, I was a resident assistant in Garden Village. My sophomore year, I was a resident assistant at Clark Kerr campus. My junior year, I was a senior resident assistant at Clark Kerr campus. And then this year, my senior year, I'm a SRA at Martinez Commons. So for starters, I will talk a little bit about the Berkeley housing application. So I've gotten some questions about the housing application in regards to the application deadline. And so for the housing application, you just want to make sure that you apply by the deadline. So for first year students and for transfer students, the deadline is different. Otherwise, you won't get housing <laughs> since you didn't fill out the application. With this housing application deadline, it does not matter if you submitted the housing application the day you heard that you were accepted to UC Berkeley versus if you submit the housing application on the day that it is due. It is not a rolling application basis. It does not give you priority if you are earlier or if you do it literally one minute before it's due. The only thing that you have to do is submit it before that deadline and then you are placed in a pool and it's basically a random number generator that fills out housing. So there is no priority preference if you fill out the application earlier versus later. Additionally with the housing application you want to make sure that you fill out this application correctly. It gives you five options where you can put your preferences for where you want to live and then as your fifth option you need to put any room any location as this will if your top four options get filled by the time the random number generator gets to your name you will still be offered some kind of housing that is available it just might not be your top four choices and so for your top four preferences that is what this video is going to be about basically I'm going to be explaining the different housing options for traditional first-year students Students, as well as the housing options for transfer students, continuing students, and re-entry students. So if you fall into the latter category and you only want to hear housing that more pertains to older students, transfers, re-entry students, then I will stick a timestamp on the screen where you can skip ahead. But if you do want to hear about the more traditional freshman student housing, let's start that right now. So for traditional first year housing, we have unit one, Unit 2, Unit 3, Foothill, Clark Kerr Campus, and then Blackwell. And you should note that all of Berkeley's dorms are actually not located on Berkeley's campus. So you have all of the classrooms and lecture halls and then all of the dorms are actually on the surrounding city area next to the actual college campus. So here where my mouse is, is the Unit 1 Residence Hall. It's this cluster of high-rise buildings right here. And then you can see it's like two blocks from campus. So where my mouse is with the tennis courts, this is campus. And then I'm going over to Sproul Plaza. So it's sort of near the upper part of campus, but also it's still very, very close to campus. Then going over from unit one, we have unit two. It looks exactly like unit one, just it's two blocks over with this field in between separating them. On my channel, I have a video of some tours of campus, including the dorms, so definitely check that out. I will have the playlist linked down below. So in between unit one and unit two, where my mouse is, is the Crossroads Dining Hall, one of the main dining halls on campus, so it's in between those. One thing I would say about unit two is that it's right next to People's Park here, and and so this is where a lot of the transient folks in Berkeley's community stay. And so if that makes you uncomfortable, you probably shouldn't put Unit 2 as one of your top housing choices. And then going down from Unit 1 and Unit 2, two blocks down we are coming up on Unit 3. 
3 where my mouse is circling right now. And so Unit 3 is also a cluster of high-rise buildings right here and then across the street is Blackwell Hall. And where my mouse is, this is Cafe 3, another one of the dining halls on campus. And so Blackwell technically is the closest dorm to campus with zero blocks. <laughs> where you see the pool, that is campus also. So this is close to campus, but it's just the lower part of campus, so it really depends where your classes are, and classes are typically all over campus. And so going over to the Foothill dorms, it's way at the upper end of campus. As you can see, I'm Google Earthing way through campus right now, taking a long time. Foothill is way up on the hill hence its name. So you can see in the corner where my mouse is, this is the cluster called Foothill. Also in Foothill is Stern. This is the female identifying only residence hall. The other residence halls also have female only and male only floors, and this is something that you can indicate on your housing application. But Stern is just the whole entire building is all female identifying. And so Foothill is close to campus, but the upper edge of campus. So it's near a lot of the engineering classrooms and stuff like that, but it would be a lot further away from from the center part of campus and it's way up the hill so that's a negative part where my mouse is right now is the Greek theater this is actually a concert venue theater on campus so if you don't like concerts music or you're a light sleeper this might be a little problematic so flying over back this way we are going to Clark Kerr this one is the furthest dorm from campus you can see unit 2 here and then we are going to go up to Clark Kerr for me when I lived there the past two years it took about 12 minutes walk if I'm lucky some classes that are further away it could take a lot longer of a walk so I would definitely say that living at Clark Kerr added about an hour to my travel every single day especially at nighttime it got a little bit sketch because I would not feel comfortable walking home so I'd always have to wait for a bus or something and that took a long time so it is further away but it is nicer because it is Spanish villa style and not high rises you can see all of the little small buildings they're only like two floors each versus is a high-rise building with eight floors. And the cool thing about Clark Kerr is because it's out of the city area, it is near all of these residential houses here. So that's a cool thing. Clark Kerr, same as Foothill, they both have dining halls in them. So here at Berkeley, we have different housing options. You can be in a traditional dorm style option, a mini suite option, and then an apartment style option. So the traditional dorm style option, that's like your stereotypical 40 students on the floor sharing one communal bathroom. The mini suite option is like four or five students sharing a room or two separate rooms like a double and a triple and then the five students have their own private bathroom within that room. And then finally the apartment style option that's like a bunch of rooms and then they have a shared kitchen and common space which is what makes it different from the mini suite style option that doesn't have that shared common space or kitchen. So breaking it down by unit now, unit one and unit two, they both have the traditional style options and the mini suite style options, as well as unit two has apartment style options, but that may be reserved for the older students. Unit three just has traditional dorm style options, no mini suites, no apartments, just the stereotypical dorm style options. Similarly, Blackwell also only has traditional dorm style options, but but in Blackwell it is double rooms so only two people living in the room versus like unit one two and three are probably triples or quads so three or four people in the room the cool thing about Blackwell is that it did just open two years ago I would also definitely say that Blackwell since it is open to first years and continuing students it might be more difficult to get into because the continuing students would have priority for those rooms and then also Clark Kerr campus also has the traditional door 
dorm style, the mini suite, and apartment style options. And then finally, Foothill also has the dorm style and the mini suite options. Depending on what you're looking for, I would definitely say since I have lived in all three styles of living, I've lived in traditional dorm style, mini suite, and apartments, I would say that the traditional dorm style option is the most social option out of the three because you have to see everyone in the bathroom, everyone hangs out in the hall, versus the mini suite and the apartment style option. It's a little more quiet because you do have that double door effect where people in the mini suite, if you wanted to see them, you would have to knock through two separate doors in order to meet your neighbors. Similarly with apartments, there's really no need to leave your apartment because you have a lounge and because you have a kitchen inside of the apartment. So depending on what you're looking for, for your time living in the dorms at Berkeley, that might factor into your decision. And then for continuing students, transfer students, and re-entry students, you can live in all of the places I just listed here, or more commonly, people choose to live in the apartment style housing rather than the dorm style housing. So older students typically live in Martinez Commons, Channing Bowditch, New Sequoia, Garden Village, Panoramic Berkeley, and brand new opening in fall 2020 is Enclave. But this year I lived in Martinez Commons and Enclave is right next to Martinez Commons. So I saw this building being built and got woken up every day by construction. So where my mouse is right now is Martinez Commons. If you watch the earlier parts, Unit 1 and Unit 2 are right here as well. So this is close to campus, about two blocks away. And it's right next to where my mouse is. This is Crossroads Dining Hall. The apartments don't come with meal plans because they come with a kitchen, but Martinez Commons also has the traditional dorm style option housing as well. So right across the street from Martinez Commons is Channing Bowditch. This is also apartment style housing. Where my mouse is right now is Telegraph. This street is basically the main street coming out of Berkeley's campus. It has a lot of shops and restaurants and stuff. This white roofed building is New Sequoia, so basically two, three blocks away from campus as well. Also apartments, I would definitely say the bad thing about New Sequoia is that it's built right above a bar called Raleigh's. If you're a light sleeper or don't like loud noises, that might be a problem for you because the bar can be loud and pop in at all hours and there's nothing really that you can do about it. Right across the street, this Google Earth is not updated because this is an empty plot of land right now. This is where Enclave apartments are located and yes, it does does look like that weird castle architecture from the photo. Right down the street on Telegraph is Panoramic Berkeley apartment, so it's just a little bit further down, but maybe like six blocks, it's not like a huge amount difference of a walk, so all of these options that I just talked about are good. And then going way down the street, we are going to Garden Village. When I lived there, I didn't really like the walk because it is way further away off campus in a diagonal. And there's not really that many buses that go there besides the night safety shuttle. But that was just a personal preference. It's just way down here where my mouse is right now. So maybe like a 15 minute walk sort of to the lower end of campus and then you still have to walk on campus. I just personally don't like it because it's too far away. I would definitely say if you're a transfer student that you should try to live in Martinez Commons or Channing Bowditch. Martinez Commons, I worked there as an RA this year and we actually had like one and a half floors just of transfer students. So if you're looking for more of that community freshman year kind of experience, you might want to pick one of the those options because then you could be with people your age who are in the same situation as you coming from another school brand new to Berkeley and so if you wanted to bond like that then that's totally something that you should keep in mind and so yeah this was a brief rundown of all of the housing options that we have here on Berkeley's campus let me know if you have any questions down below or if you have any just Berkeley related questions in general I would be happy to answer them hopefully this was helpful thank you Thank you all so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you all next time.